Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me here. Uh, I just want to ask you something. Could you just give a big applause to the, the organizers of NG Europe, please? <laughs> yep. Thank you, guys. So today, uh, I would like to give you an overview of Angular Universal and um, server-side rendering with Angular 2. My name is Wassim Chagia. I work as a developer advocate at Sphere here in Paris. Um, by the way, we are hiring, if you're interested. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I also contribute to a lot of uh, open source projects, such as Angular Universal, Angular Core, Polymer, Web Components, and so on. Um, also a member of the Google Developer Expert um, uh, program in Angular JS and in Angular, sorry, and web technologies. And you can follow me on Twitter and GitHub at Manikinik. So uh, before speaking about uh, server-side rendering, let's try and give an answer to this question. Why should I care about server-side rendering? I have I mean, I have my application, which is running really well, but why should I add support for server-side? Well, one of the <coughs> most common answer we have to this question is ACO, obviously. Um, <coughs> I'm building a public-facing enterprise application. If I don't add support to ACO, I might lose customers because search engines cannot, cannot uh, index my application. And last time I checked, uh, most uh, search engine crawlers doesn't really understand JavaScript <laughs> and uh, SPAs. So you probably need to add support for server-side rendering if you want to keep your customers happy and uh, help them find your product. So th that was SEO. Another interesting use case for server-side rendering, it's what we call link preview. So this is, this is what, when you share a link on your favorite social media, that social media tries to generate a screen, uh, preview, a screenshot of your website, of the first page of the website. And if your application doesn't have server-side rendering support, you would end up with a blank screenshot, white screenshot, which is OK, by the way, but we can do better. But to me, one of the most important reasons why we need to have server-side rendering is this thing, this thing which we call uh, the web app gap, or how to reduce, how to improve the first the first page rendering. So let me explain before um, maybe something you already know. <laughs> what is this web app gap? So usually when you, your customer um, <coughs> types the URL of your application, the server sends back the HTML with all the assets, the, all the resources, and then the browser, the client, goes through all the loading pass assets, parsing those JavaScript files, and then uh, execute your application, web app application. And after that, your web app bootstraps your code, and then maybe get fetches all the necessary data from different, different APIs. And after that, it prints out your UI, your application. But this process usually takes up to seven, maybe 10 seconds for 10 seconds for like big complex applications. So this is um, the statistics, like my own statistics, our statistics, not like serious statistics. And this is what we call the web app gap. So this time, I mean the whole time when, when where your user doesn't see anything on the screen and waiting, probably maybe you, you added like a loader tell him to please wait. So this is what we call the web app gap. I did a little experiment. So maybe you recognize this website. I don't want to say the name. Um, oh. So I tried to load 
the page. So here I'm reloading the page. So this is what I got for like two, up to three seconds, a blank screen, a gray screen. Um, and this is obviously a bad user experience. I guess you all agree. You don't want to, I mean, life is too short to wait for the loader. So how um, this gap is being fixed? Because obviously uh, there is a solution to this. So typically what most um, modern web app frameworks, web app application do, do is when you request the web app, the server sends back the initial page, server-side rendered. Um, maybe, maybe it's an like application shell or like a UI that mimic the final UI, the end UI. But at least the user sees something on the screen. Uh, maybe he or she could interact with your application while your real application is bootstrapping. So when it bootstraps, the client, the, I mean, the, the, your web app takes, takes over and then renders the initial state. So please, uh, please take note that when the user sees, I mean, the green, the green line, when the user sees your application, he or she might start in interacting with your application. So he's starting mutating the state of your application, but when the client bootstraps, he might or she might lose that, that state. But we'll come back to this later on. So this is what typically like Ember or Meteor do. Uh, probably also Angular 1, Angular JS, but with, for instance, render, like uses the headless browser. Uh, by the way, who already, who had already set up a uh, server-side rendering with Angular 1? Okay, like five people. <laughs> That's really a problem. <laughs> so uh, the good news is now we can do this with Angular 2. How does this work? I mean, okay, we have Angular Universal. I will explain how this works, but if we can do this with Angular Universal, it's because of Angular 2. It's because of the core of Angular 2 and how Angular 2 is designed. By Angular 2, I mean the framework. <clears throat> so usually when you write your application, um, this, I mean, the, the, the code you write, the component annotation, the, the models, all that, all that stuff, get compiled by the application layer. This is where typically the, the compiler the lives, and passed, um, generate some sort of uh, view tree, with then, which then get passed to the rendering layer, and this rendering layer has, by default, the DOM render for the browser because. Uh, this is the most common use case for uh, your, the, the web, our web applications. But we also have, uh, because Angular 2 is able to work, to run uh, inside the web worker, so there is a render for that, or a serializer for that. And for Universal, we have a custom render, a node DOM render, for, especially for Node.js. Because I'm... I didn't mention, but obviously Universal is able to work with Node and uh, currently .NET, .NET Core, and in the future, other server-side technologies such as Java, Python, PHP, and so on. So remember, we talked about the states. Remember state that went out of sync uh, when your <coughs> uh, application bootstraps? So how about state? How can we handle the state? So with Universal, what we do is when, you s when we send back the server-side rendered first page or the page that the user requested, we inlined a small program, small JavaScript program called PreboJS. And this program just simply, simply and intelligently <laughs> records all the events that happen on the browser, on the browser side. By the way, you can configure those events, such as mouse, mouse clicks, key up, key ups, key press, all the stuff. And then, when um, <coughs> Angular bootstrap your application, 
then preboot replace all those events and try to sync up the two states. The first state that gets rendered by the server and the, uh, the one that gets rendered by Angular uh, on the client. So yeah, so this is what um, Preboot does. I don't know about you, but this is really mind blowing. I didn't, s I didn't hear any wow or <laughs> such that. Um, yeah, but I'm so excited about this. And uh, Jeff Wolpley is the author of this small library. So enough talking about the, the high level archi architecture. Let's see some code. So for now, um, the, <laughs> right. <laughs> the, um, the architecture that we recommend for Angular, for Angular Universal is like you would have your typical Angular 2 application untouched, and then you will provide two entry points. So here we have on the right the browser module that gets bootstrapped by the client file. Actually, you can like merge both files into one if you would like, but we try to keep things separate. And then you would provide another entry point for the server side uh, part, which here we have, like, we have the Node.js version, and both we get, we, will get bundled into the same index.html. So quickly, let's have a look at each file. So this is your, 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 your components, or maybe your I should have put actually a model here. So, row up Angular 2 application, nothing fancy. And then you will have your browser module um, where you import the universal module from in Angular 2 universal slash um, browser because we are, we are bootstrapping here the browser. And this module get then imported into your, ain, your own module, which then exports uh, like the browser module, HTTP, and JSON module for you. For the, for the server, and this is for Node.js again, I guess for Java or PHP, you would have another <laughs> entry, obviously. So for the server, you import the same universal module, but from universal to, uh, Angular 2 universal slash Node. node. And you would have the same, um, providers, the same modules, but made specifically for Node. Like for instance, you would have the Node HTTP module, which is no HTTP but patch to work with Node. Uh, so instead of using XHR on the browser, we're using like requests on the server. And then uh, we have the two files that bootstrap your, 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 your application on the server and, the, and on the browser. So this is uh, what, what you could find like in, the, in any CLI generated application. Uh, just one small difference is here we are using the platform universal dynamic for JIT, obviously, and calling this, uh, this function to bootstrap your module. And on the server, because here we are on Node.js and more precisely using Express.js, the, Exp the Node.js framework. Uh, we have, I mean, Universal provides a custom engine for Express. We call this a renderer. So we have also uh, other renderers for, um, for HappyJS. We have also renderers for build tools such as Webpack or Gulp or Grunt. And then, uh, I mean, any, Express developer here in the audience will understand this code. It's like, just give it the custom render uh, with a, um, some configuration, and then it would work. And of course, the index.html, nothing fancy here again. However, there is one more thing you should know, and you should all be doing right now when you are building your Angular 2 applications. It's Never ever touch the DAW directly. Please use the provided render API from Angular and from Universal. Um, so yeah, if you if you start if you start like um, 
touching and accessing, modifying your DOM directly, your Angular application will never work, <laughs> obviously, on the server, but even uh, will not work on like any web worker context because we have no DOM in context in the uh, in the web worker context. So yeah, this is like a good be best practice for Angular 2 uh, applications. Please always use the renderer. So yeah, and there is more, more stuff. Uh, for instance, we have a, a starter, a seed for Node.js made, made by Patrick. Um, so if you want to get, get started like right now with Universal, check it out, uh, play with it. And um, it's only for Express, by the way. We also will have a CLI add-on coming soon which will allow you to scaffold your application with universal support, dash dash universal. So this would uh, give you the ability to server side uh, render any um, page on the fly, any request on the fly. And also you will be able in the future to take your existing Angular 2 application uh, with, server, with universal support and generate a static version of the whole application that you could, uh, for instance, deploy to any CDN or cache somewhere. So, uh, obviously, we love contributions, so if you have some time, <laughs> please check out our, um, our repo. So, actually, the Octopus is a, a link, so you can click on it, and then, uh, take any issue you would like and give us your help. We'll we would appreciate this. I think I'm ahead of time. So that's, that was Universal. Uh, my name is Wasim Shagam, and thanks for you. Thank you. We have a, we have a couple of minutes. If you have any questions. Yep. Okay, for the for the router um, or the router, <laughs> uh, we have some initial um, support for like basic basic routing. I don't I don't think right now we have like we can handle the lazy loading uh, modules for now, uh, but we're able to like to get your, uh, the, your routes and generate the specific um, view, like basic support for now. <coughs> I will be available outside after if you have any question about, about that. We also, need, uh, I mean, we also need your help if you are a Java developer or PHP or other non-Node.js developer. There is a couple of issues on GitHub. Please take the one you, you like and uh, give us your, hand, your help. Thank you.